Chapter 8.4, Stretching and Shrinking Graphs. Okay, so we have already learned about the other transformations, um, translating to the left, right, up or down, and then reflecting um, across lines. Now we're going to look at stretching and shrinking of graphs and figures. So let's start with some vocabulary. Um, to shrink is a transformation that decreases the height or width of a figure. So we've already talked about the fact um, that most of the equations we've been working with have been in the form y equals um, a times the quantity x minus minus h and plus k where um, h and k are is our vertex um, and this is either in quadratics where we have a parabola or also in absolute values where we have the v-shaped graph okay um, and a lot of you have asked what a was and I said we'd get to it later um, and today we'll learn that a is our shrinking or our stretching factor so a is gonna affect our graph in that way when a is less than one and greater than negative one but not zero then we will shrink all right when a is greater than one or less than negative one we will stretch All right, and you'll come to see that in a couple of, exa of examples that we have. If you want to pause the video and get down those vocabulary, you can do so. Example A, describe the graph of y equals 0.5 times the absolute value of x um, and relate it to the graph of y equals the absolute value of x. So we know that y equals the absolute value of x is our parent function here. So let's get down maybe a table here. Let's have some x values and then some absolute value of x values. So this would be y equals the absolute value of x. And then let's have some y equals 0.5 times the absolute value of x values. And let's just go through here. If we have x equals 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, what's going to happen here? And let's do 5. Okay, so y equals the absolute value of x. The absolute value of 0 is 0. The absolute value of 1 is 1. The absolute value of 2 is 2. The absolute value of 3 is 3. The absolute value of 4 is 4. And the absolute value of 5 is 5. Let's switch over here to y equals 0.5 times the absolute value of x. Well, the absolute value of 0 is 0 times 1 half is still 0. The absolute value of 1 is 1 times 1 half is going to be 1 half. The absolute value of 2 is 2 times 1 half is going to be 1. The absolute value of 3 is 3 times 1 half is going to be 1.5. Absolute value of 4 times a half is going to be 2. And the absolute value of 5 times a half is going to be 2.5. So what I'm noticing here is that we're just taking half of the absolute value functions. Okay, our y values are being cut in half. So let's see what that looks like on a graph. Okay, I know that the absolute value of x is going to look like this where my slope is 1 on both sides of my line and my vertex is there at 0, 0. It looks like with my new function my vertex is also going to be at 0, 0. When x is 0, y is 0. Okay. When x is 1, however, though, y is a half. And when x would, the absolute value of negative 1 times a half would also be a half. Okay. Absolute value of 2 times a half is a half, or is 1. Absolute value of 3 times a half is, was 1.5. 4 went to 2. And you can see here I start to make a couple new lines. And so if we connect that, we can see that my vertex is still at 0, 0, and I need to fix this one here. My vertex is still at 0, 0, 
but my slope has decreased significantly. And in stretching and shrinking here, we call this a shrink, um, a vertical shrink. All right, so my graph has shrunk vertically. My V has been pushed down, as it were. Okay, so let's look at a quadratic. All right, so this next equation, we're asked to find an equation for the function shown in the graph. Okay, I notice right away that we have a parabola, and I know that all parabolas come from the parent function y equals x squared. So I'm going to go ahead and graph our parent function um, to see what our change is. All right, so we know that the parent function starts at 0, 0, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, as is negative 1, 2 squared is 4, as is negative 2, and 3 squared is 9, as is negative 3. So if I connect these two here, and bear with my parabola drawing skills, I notice that we definitely have a translation. I see that our graph is translated 4 to the left and 2 up. Okay, but when we get there, I notice also that this new red function seems skinnier than our parent function, which is black. And I don't think that it's so skinny that I just messed up um, in my drawing of parabolas. Okay, so we're going to get to that. First, let's change our equation to um, reflect the translation that we know has happened. All right, so we're going to have a y equals x squared um, equation. All right, and since we have gone 4 to the left, we know that's a addition within the squaring, okay, within the parentheses. And then we've gone up 2, so it's also an addition of 2 on the outside of the parabola. Okay, notice I've left room. Notice I've left room for an A value here that we're going to plug in. But to do that, let's look at what we do um, our shift in values as we move along the x-axis and the y-axis. For each shift here, okay, so I've set up a table here to look at our stretch factor, okay, because we we can tell that um, if we move our, our parent function here, we have kind of stretched this parabola upwards, which has caused it to pull in. Okay, so we call that a sh vertical stretch, and we're going to find out just how much we're stretching. And we're, to do that, we're going to look at the distance moved from the vertex. Okay, we can't necessarily say look at 0.11 because we've translated as well. So we're just going to look at distance moved horizontally versus distance moved vertically. So I can see in my parent function, as I move 1 over, I move 1 up. So my distance from the vertex, if that's 1, I move 1 up on the parent function. On the f of x function, as I move 1 over, it looks like I move 1 and a half up. Okay? So let's look at a factor there. If we look at 1.5 over 1, that obviously gives us 1.5. So it looks like we're stretching it at a factor of 1.5. But let's look at another point to make sure that's the case. As I move 2 over on the x-axis, on the parent function, I move 1, 2, 3, 4 up. So 2 over went 4 up on the parent function. 2 over on the f of x function went up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so again, let's look at our ratio there. We have a 6 to 4, which is, again, 1.5. So our stretch factor there is going to be 1.5, and that will be our A in our equation. So in our equation, let's go through what really happens here. We took 1.5, which is, is stretching our parabola upwards. The 4 is moving us to the left, and the addition of 2 is moving us up 2. And that's how we get from the parent function of y equals x squared to this new function y equals 1.5 times the quantity x plus 4 squared 
plus two. So there is no assignment for you to come to class with, but come with your questions. If you're not quite sure on this, be sure to get some questions down about where you are uncomfortable and make sure you have this table down so that we can, or you can use it as a reference come test time.